and my counselor, also and my Lord, sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom. Ex and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. Let's read uh, together the rest of the sentence. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. And those that walk in pride, he is able. To our base. There was a radical change of heart, life in the king. He had been cleansed and purged from his sin of pride. The gifts and the goodness of God had not led him to repentance, but the judgment, the rod, the indignation, the heavy hand, the rod of judgment, the divine discipline that came upon him had humbled him and turned him to the righteousness of God. And that's what we're told in Isaiah chapter 26. Look at this in your Bible. Mark it in your Bible. Isaiah chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 9. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 9. It says, With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, my, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let favor be showed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of the upright, in the land of uprightness? Will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord? There was a clear recognition of the great sin of his previous life, which he himself called walking in pride. Now he confessed to, the being, uh, to his being humbled, seeing himself with all the inhabitants of the earth as reputed as nothing. At last he was emptied of self. At last he was full of praises unto God. At last the God of heaven became so important and exalted before him. After his experience of transformation, there was a clear experience and evidence of humility. In his royal proclamation, he magnified God in his humiliation and his, in his restoration, concealing nothing and excusing nothing of God's rebuke and, of, and dealings with him. After his cleansing and transformation, he had more honor than he had before. Yet he was not proud of it. And as he was before, he who never looked up to heaven in the former days of his pride, now looked up to heaven, seeing nothing on earth, and no one on earth to be proud of. And that's why you need to pray, purge me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And the word of God says in First John chapter 1 verse 7, The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Without this cleansing, without this purging, we shall remain in our defilement, dirty and defiled. We cannot live in the holy presence of God in heaven forever. No one who is covered with the defilement of pride will sit with Christ on his royal throne, on his royal heavenly throne. The Lord has the power to forgive. The Lord has the power to save. And the Lord has the power to cleanse, praying sincerely with unwavering faith and absolute confidence confidence in God's power and promise we can be purged and then we can be kept pure, clean, ready for heaven. And let's look at the word of God. It, it tells us in Psalm 51, Psalm 51, this is the prayer that David prayed and it's recorded for us so that we too will know when you have been defiled with the pride of life. You have been, def been defiled with the sin of arrogance and haughtiness. You can come to the Lord and pray and say, Lord, wash me and purge me. Make me whiter than snow. In Psalm 51, I'm reading from verse 7. Purge me with Esau and I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. All my iniquities create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. A right spirit, humble spirit, lowly spirit. 
that you cleanse and purge away all the pride of the heart that shows the depravity of man or the fallen man and shows the depravity of the reprobate that you tell the Lord, Lord, wash me, cleanse me, purge me, purify me, take all this pride away from me. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. To serve the living God. We need to be purged and cleansed and washed all the pride, taking away all the defilement of sin, taking away before we can worship God acceptably. Verse 22. That is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all sins are by the Lord purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. Without the shedding of the blood of Jesus, we couldn't have had that remission. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. For you to be useful in the hand of God, and for God to pour His Spirit upon your life and make you extraordinarily useful, profitable in the kingdom of God, we must be purged and purified from pride and every other sin. In Second Timothy chapter two, verse. 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God and the show, having the seal, the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. For in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of wood and of earth, and some to honor, some to dishonor. Verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself, You've discovered yourself, you've discovered the death of the defilement of sin, and you've discovered the death and defilement of pride, and you want to be useful in the household of faith, you also want to get to heaven, you want the Lord to accept you into his presence now and in eternity. It says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work, and then when temptation to pride comes, what do you do? Flee. Also youthful laws, but follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace with all them that call on the Lord with a pure heart. I was looking at um, Romans chapter 12, verses 3 and verse six, uh, 16. Romans chapter 12. We're reading from verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that's among you, not to think, it's in the heart, you remember, not to think, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Verse 16, be of the same mind one to another. And then he says, mind not high things. In the house of God, in the household of faith, be satisfied with where God has put you and limit yourself to the responsibility you have been assigned. Don't aspire to a great ambition. I want to be this, I want to be that. To be in control of your leader in your district, in your group, in your state, in your region. Stay where God has put you. And it says, Mind not high things, condescend to men of low estate, be not wise in your own conceit. It tells us in James chapter 4, James chapter 4, I'm reading to you from verse 6. James chapter 4, we're looking at verse 6. But he giveth more grace, I pray he'll give you more grace. It may good, good, amen. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud. If you are proud, God will resist you. Pride in your heart, God will resist you. Every time you want to make progress, you want to get something done, something will happen. God will put a barricade there, a wall of partition, a barrier there. He will resist you. If you are pride, because God hates pride in anyone, anytime, any generation. It says, 
over here wherefore he saith god resisteth the proud but giveth grace to the humble submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you verse 10 humble yourselves in the sight of the lord and he shall lead you up we're looking at first peter chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 5 first peter chapter 5 verse 5 likewise ye younger submit yourselves unto the elder younger in age submit yourself unto the elder Yo younger in spiritual responsibility submit yourselves unto the elder now if you are disobeying the bible if you are disobeying this the grace of god will not be multiplied in your life the lord will resist you it says ye all of you be subject one to another and be closed with what with humility for god resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble but says humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of god that she may exalt you in due season philippians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 3 philippians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 3 let nothing be done through strife of inglory nothing however small however minute however temporary However long, whatever it is, however spiritual, however mechanical, let nothing be done through strife of being glory, but in lowliness of mind that teaches to more other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even to the death of the cross the lord wants us to manifest that humility i'm going to show you two examples before we pray in second chronicles chapter 32 second chronicles chapter 32 a man who was perfect, a man who was righteous, a man who was righteous in the sight of the Lord. And later, pride came in. Maybe you are saved. Maybe you are born again. And you profess to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, profitable in the kingdom of God. Remain in that humility and remain in that holiness and meekness. Because if you not go back and then you become proud and say, I know my record, I've been perfect, I've been righteous, I've been pure, I've been useful, I've been profitable. And now you descend low into the valley of pride. The chastisement of God was still calm. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 32 verse 24. Second Chronicles chapter 22 verse 24. And in those days Ezekiah was sick unto death. And he prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. The Lord healed Ezekiah. But now look at verse 25. But Ezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. For his heart was lifted up, therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. He was a humble man, he was a meek man, he was a perfect, he was a righteous man. And when Isa said, set your house in order, because you will die, you will not leave. He turned his face to the wall, he said, oh Lord, remember, I have walked perfectly before you. And the Lord said, Isa, look at that man, I accept what he has said. He has been righteous and perfect before me. Tell him, healing will come. I add 15 years to his life. Within those 15 years that were added to his life, it says in verse 25, But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. For his heart was lifted up, therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. We're looking at chapter 34, Second Chronicles chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 26. And as for the king of Judah, this Josiah now, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall you say unto him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, 
I, concerning him the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, and humbled thyself before me, and didst rain thy clothes and weep before me, and I have even heard thee also, says the Lord, behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt, shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place, upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. This one was humble. He had the word of God. He humbled himself. In the case of Hezekiah, who had been a righteous, pure, perfect king, a beloved king, an appreciated king, because of the pride of his heart, the Lord said, this backsliding. And was very near the time of his death. And God said, wrath is going to come upon you and upon Judah and Jerusalem. In the case of Josiah, the Lord testified unto his humility when he heard the word of God. You make your choice tonight. Which one will you choose? Where will you be? And what will be your attitude? Will you be like Josiah that will reject the word of God and say, No, I don't want to hear that. And then if you are like that, you'll perish in your pride. But if you come and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, the Lord says he'll have mercy upon you because he looks upon the humble and then he exalts them. We're going to rise up. We're going to pray to the Lord. that the Lord himself who has spoken to us today will help us to escape the judgment that came upon Nebuchadnezzar and upon the many people in the Bible that were proud. You stand up and check up your life and check up your heart and see what has happened there and see where you have been and what you have been doing and see what the Lord is saying. Don't push the word to other people. Here is the word of God unto you. Say, oh Lord, here I am. Let the word of God extray your life. And then you tell the Lord now, oh Lord, here is where I stand. I'm sorry for anything of pride in my past life. And you humble yourself in such your Lord, and the Lord says, He'll forgive you. Open your mouth and pray. Have a right attitude as you hear the word of God. Accept the word of God. Hold on to this word. And say, Lord, here am I. I surrender myself before you. Nobody is so great that the Lord does not look at his life. His heart, his disposition, his attitude, his reaction, his response to the spoken word, the reaching word, inspired word. The Lord says, in thine heart, what's in your heart? Pride, arrogance, a lifting up of self. And through his self, concentration of self, adoration, admiration of self. Why don't you tell the Lord, I'm sorry for that. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Call you upon the Lord while is near. Seek him while is near. While he can be found. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord in all humility and submission. And the Lord will have mercy upon him. Everyone who exalts himself, the Lord will abase. But he who humbles himself, the Lord will exalt. Pride is a deadly sin. Pride is a terrible sin. Repent of it. 
Be humbled before the Lord. Your man is God. You are a creature, his creator. You are a child, earthly, his father, heavenly, everlasting, eternal. To this man will I look. The one that has a contrite heart and trembles at my word. Forgiveness comes only after repentance. The transformation of Nebuchadnezzar was evident, visible, demonstrable. People around him could see. And he wrote about it and sent it to all people. And now we're learning about it. We're learning from it today. Don't let the word of God come to you in vain. Samuel did not allow the word of God to fall to the ground. It had a place in his heart. It had transformation, effect, the life of Nebuchadnezzar. Unfortunately for Belshazzar, he knew all this. He learned about all this. He saw it all. But he learned nothing until the judgment of God came from heaven and that hand appeared that wrote his verdict, his sentence, his judgment upon the wall. Then the fear, consternation come upon him and his knees began to knock together until the judgment came, the interpretation came. The kingdom is divided. The way I'm found wanting. The Lord has finished everything about you. Do not wait until that hour. Be purged, be cleansed, be washed, be purified from the sin of pride. Pride of possession. Pride of achievement, pride of position, pride of beauty, the pride of what you have, the wear don't harden your heart in pride. Bend low before the Almighty God. And say, Lord, have mercy on me. They'll have mercy on you. God resists the proud. But he gives grace, more grace unto the humble. Be not she mere hearers of the word, be doers of the word. Give God a chance to work in your heart. God is God, His Creator. Is the Almighty, is the ancient of days, is the one in whose hand your breath is. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, that He may lift you up in due time. The purged. From the pride of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. 
the pride of Absalom, the pride of Nebuchadnezzar, the pride of Lucifer. I say, God, I bend low before you. The sight of the Lord. Then ask for grace. Now what God has done, the purging, the purifying, the cleansing, pray that you would be permanent.